The history of the A's is one of grand tradition. Tales of championships from the Philadelphia teams of Connie Mack. It's also a history of westward pilgrimage to Kansas City and finally Oakland, where the traditions of yesteryear became a link to a new identity. Little did Californians know back in 1968 that the Oakland A's were to become one of baseball's most colorful franchises, filled with a tenacity for success. The all-time A's, a 25-year salute to baseball in Oakland. During the 1991 season, fans were asked to vote for their all-time Oakland A's dream team, the players they felt were Oakland's finest over the past 25 years. This reveals the results of that poll, the runners-up and starters for the all-time A's. Most of the players chosen were from recent teams, but several were picked from Oakland's championship clubs of the 1970s. The style and aura of those early Oakland teams emanated just as much from their colorful personalities as their ability on the diamond. We won the division five consecutive years, and we did it with a lot of flair, you know. We were a brash group of guys, and uh, we had the long hairs and the mustaches, and uh, we were a outspoken group of characters. You know, in our ball club, we did a lot of fighting. Uh, you know, we fought in the clubhouse, we fought in the buses, we fought in the airplanes and the hotels. And the, But what made news was we were doing all this and still winning world championships, and that's what made the big news. They won the series in 1972, 73, and 74, spurred by their united discord with Charlie Finley. Our one come and done was that it's like we were fighting the owner, Mr. Finley himself, when we took the field. And we took it out on the opposing teams. Uh, we felt as though we were going to win. I think our opponents felt as though they were going to be beat when they took the field with us. We learned to lose together. We learned to win together. And now we are winners, and nobody can beat us. That's the way we felt. The self-confidence of true champions. Oakland's dream team starting pitchers. John Blue Moon Odom, runner-up in the fan voting for Oakland's all-time starting four. In the 72 series, Odom fanned 13 Reds in 11 innings. Who was Cincinnati? You know, I don't know Cincinnati. I know the, uh, the town. Who was Cincinnati? I knew we was Oakland. We was the best. Ken Holtzman, also voted runner-up, contributed to three titles. His World Series batting average, 333. There's a sharp ground ball, base hit by Holtzman. That ball's hit well, it is carrying, and then... Another second-team finisher in the voting, pitcher Mike Moore, also a big hit in the Fall Classic. In 1989, Moore went undefeated during the postseason. Three wins, no losses. He also led the A's in strikeouts and won a career-high 19 games. Standing tall among the all-time starting four, Bob Welch. After 10 years with the Dodgers, Welch was traded to the A's. I spoke to Dave Stewart uh, like the day after I was traded, and uh, Stu and I were good friends with the Dodgers and remain good friends. And he just told me to prepare myself to get ready to come up here and play on a great baseball team. You know, he told me that I would fit in and, and get an opportunity to do some things here that maybe I've never done before. And yeah, you got to be thinking fastball here. Maybe that pitch, that mystery pitch uh, to Fisk. Oh, got it. In 1990, using fastball and forkball, he won the Cy Young Award. Welch only lost six games and set an Oakland single-season record for victories with 27. 
In 1971, Vita Blue, at age 21, took the American League by storm. Vita just had a year, and the first full year, he was Cy Young winner, he was Rookie of the Year. Now, those are two things that are hard to come by. Well, you only get one shot of Rookie of the Year, but he won it hands down. He could throw a baseball harder than anybody I'd seen. I had two 1971 dimes that since then I've, I've lost. I might have used them for a phone call, I don't know. They were symbolic of what I was attempting to do, which was to win 20 games. He won 24 that year, and in seven seasons with the A's, Vida won 17 or more five times. Another Dream Team starter, Dave Stewart. Here it is, ground ball, right of second. Gallego is over, has it, throws, he's out. Stewart with a triumphant gesture. Dave Stewart's 20th victory. A signal moment in a career of signal moments. Here's the lineup, now the pitch. Struck him out, a swing and a miss on a curve, and Stewart pitches a jam, a one hitter. The Blue Jays, one out left here. Five nothing A's. Swung on, high drive, center field. Dave Henderson signaling, it's fine, it's fine. It is, and it's a no hitter for Dave Stewart. He compiled 20 win seasons four consecutive times, a feat accomplished by only one other Oakland pitcher, another member of the A's all-time starting four, Jim Catfish Hunter. Among Oakland's all-time leaders in victories, shutouts, and strikeouts, his command of the strike zone was nothing short of legendary. Catfish was, uh, he was like a surgeon out there. Uh, he had a good slider, a uh, good, you know, halfway decent fastball, but uh, one of Catfish's assets was his control. Uh, he could hit the glove out there, no matter where the catcher put it, he could hit the glove. And he was smart. He moved, moved pitches around, he changed speeds, and uh, uh, he was just a great pitcher. I mean, he's probably one of the better pitchers I've ever seen, uh, you know, play on ball clubs that I've been on. Hunter's perfect game at age 22 in 1968 foretold his potential. A farm boy from North Carolina with the charm of a diplomat, the moxie of a bank robber, and the skill of a surgeon. If you had a game that you want won, you'd want him to pitch it. His World Series achievements rank him among the top ten in five categories. At his Hall of Fame induction, Catfish acknowledged his nickname's creator. You say Jim Hunter now, nobody really recognized that name, but when you say Catfish, everybody remembers it. Thank you, Mr. Finley, for the nickname. The A's honored Catfish in 1991 by making him the first Oakland player to have his number retired. Hunter used the occasion to mingle with old friends. He's got a ball. If you think you can throw it to him, I'm done. I was done before I started. Oh. Oh, Rod, you can't pitch with that tape on your fingers now, Rod. Don't come out here with a tape on your fingers. Oh, go ahead. E easy, easy, TD. Easy. There you go. <laughs> you remember Rudy when he first came up when nobody played catch with him? <laughs> Few would mind catching a red-hot pitching staff of Stewart, Blue, Welch, and Catfish. Speaking of catching, here's Oakland's all-time greats. Terry Steinbach, voted starting catcher on the all-time A's, a steady performer. Rock solid behind the plate. And he's running. The pitch is taken. The throw to second is perfect, and he got him. A drive to deep left field. Hit way back. Way back. Have it goodbye. In 1988, during the All-Star Game in Cincinnati, Steinbach spearheaded the American League by connecting against Dwight Gooden of the Mets. Here's a drive in the right field that backs Strawberry all the way back, and it's out of his glove and over the wall for a home run. Terry knocked home another run with a sacrifice fly and earned the All-Star MVP trophy. Gene Tennis voted backup catcher on the all-time Oakland A's. Tennis became an everyday player after an MVP performance in the 72 World Series, batting 348. He also set a home run mark for catchers. There's a long drive. That was going in and good. Gene Tennis now is the first catcher to hit four homers in a World Series. 
After becoming a regular in 1973, Gene knocked in 100 or more runs three straight years. The versatile tennis played five different positions with the A's and was voted onto the all-time team as a backup at first base. But the fans' number one choice at first base was Mark McGuire, who wasted little time making his mark. From 1987 to 91, no one hit more homers. And that one may be it, way back, and there's your record. Mark McGuire puts the A's in front with his major league rookie record 39th home run. High drive up the alley in left center field, and this one is going to be gone. Home run, McGuire. And McGuire hits a high drive, deep to left field, way back. Grand slam, Mark McGuire. Holy Toledo. The first man in history to hit 30 homers in each of his first four seasons. A gold glove winner and perhaps the best fielding first baseman in A's history. Although through the years, the A's have certainly had many infielders elite. Next, the fans' top choice at second base. Few possessed a quicker or slicker approach to baseball than Mike Gallego. Only five foot eight inches tall, but a mountain of a man defensively. Bouncing ball over Stewart's head. Gallego fields it by second, throws the first, and gets him. Swing, line drive up the middle, a diving stop by Gallego. Troy's feet throws him out. Backing up Mike on the all-time team, Dick Green. Drive to Green, they go back to first, double play. Ground ball to Dick Green. Goes to second, they got him there, over to first, got a pair, all over. There's a ball, ran Green. In 12 years with the Athletics, the great fielding green played every infield position. Helping turn those double plays with green was Oakland's all-time shortstop. Bert Campanaris, Oakland's offensive catalyst with outstanding speed and a knack for stealing bases. His spectacular glove work was indeed a sight to behold. Campy was a great shortstop. He was a great fielder, he was quick, he was a good leadoff man, he knew the game, he could bunt, he could move people around. Driving a right center field, Rusty Staub is not going to be able to get to it, but Campanaris go. He can really motor, he's already around second, and he's in at third base standing up for the triple. He stole 50 or more bases seven times and was most adept at using his legs to foil opponents. Campy's backup in the fan voting was Walt Weiss, known less for his hitting and speed than his ability with the glove. In his rookie season, he had 58 consecutive errorless games. Line drive. Weiss a diving stab to his left hit short. And he makes another brilliant play. Swung on line drive. Weiss makes a brilliant backhanded stab. And the inning is over. Is that the rookie of the year? 
Weiss became the third straight A's player to capture that honor. And now, Oakland's dream team, third baseman. Handling the bat is the best known skill of Carney Lansford, but his proficiency at third is also first rate. Great stop by Carney Lansford. This makes it look routine. Here's the first pitch now to Lansford, driven into right center, base hit. Toward the gap, he'll round first. He's going to hit for two. Here's the throw from right field offline, and he's in. Round ball toward the hole. Lansford to his left. Nice short hop pick and throw, and he gets it. Swung, ground ball. His intensity most evident, his proficiency ranks him as one of Oakland's all-time leaders in runs, base hits, and batting average. Finishing second to Lansford in the fan voting was Sal Bando. The A's co-captain hit 20 or more homers eight straight years. His leadership, outspokenness, and clutch play made him a true baseball warrior. Good fielding is critical, and Gold Glove overtures in Oakland's outfield were always a classic strain. Dream Team Outfield. When speaking of defensive gems in the outfield, it's obligatory to cite the fielding prowess of Joe Rudy, who swung his way onto the all-time A's team as a backup. Rudy was at his best in the clutch. There's a long drive to deep left. That ball going, going, and it is caught by Rudy. Tony Armas, another runner-up in the fan voting. 1980 was his most productive season. 32 homers. One on a high drive into deep left field. It's way back, way back, and a goodbye. He hit more homers from 1980 to 85 than any player in the league. Another dream team runner up. They don't move to Hindu. The popular Dave Henderson, a solid performer with a penchant for hitting home runs in the clutch. Henderson, it's the first pitch high in the air, deep center. Three to two. It might require a stretch of the imagination to deny that the most talented leadoff hitter ever is the fleet-footed Ricky Henderson. The most prolific base stealer in baseball history was voted starting outfielder for the all-time A's. In 1982 in Milwaukee, Henderson reached the culmination of a base-stealing rampage. Ricky challenged Lou Brock's single-season stolen base mark. Getting a good side lead. He is running. A pitch out the throw to second. He is safe at second. He's stolen 119. He stopped Brock's previous mark by stealing 11 more. And by season's end, 119 became 130. Ricky was traded in 1984, but landed back in Oakland nearly five years later. In his very first game, Ricky set the tone for Oakland's pennant drive with a memorable performance at the Coliseum against Toronto. Waving him around, relay to McGriff. McGriff's throw to the plate will not be in time, and Ricky's home in more ways than one. Ricky Henderson, Dave Henderson, Ricky! Making the homecoming very pleasing to the Oakland 
Cleveland fans. A few months later in the championship series against the Blue Jays, Henderson was MVP. Ricky goes with throws. Safe. He goes again. It's taken high. Here's the throw. He's in there. This will get a run home, maybe more. Mosby going back, looking up, out of here, and into wow. the black seats, the hitting background. There aren't many leadoff men who can launch one like that to dead center field. He also attained a championship series record with eight stolen bases, helping the A's win their second straight pennant. Two years later, Ricky once again basked in the national spotlight, pursuing the all-time stolen base mark. Ricky goes, a pitch taken, he's gonna have it, he does! Ricky Henderson, no contest, steals third base, number 939. Henderson surpassed Lou Brock as baseball's all-time king of steel, most deserving of a starting spot in the all-time A's outfield, alongside another top vote-getter. Number 33, Jose Canseco, right field. Power and speed, an awesome combination. And in 1988, Jose Canseco displayed both in quantities never before seen from any major leaguer. Basically, I thought if I just stayed consistent and used my ability and didn't go into any slumps, that I can make the 40-40 club. What I didn't realize is that there are no members in the 40-40 club, so I sort of just laughed at that. Here's a high drive. That might be number 40. It's on the way. He's right. There's the throw. Number 40. Jose Canseco, the first man ever in big league history. That do it. Jose's impact on the game is strictly big numbers in terms of home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, and feet, as in how far. Jose hits one. Way back in the left field. The left fielder Bichette is only watching. Can you say about that blast? There goes the runner, and there goes oh, the ball. Oh my. Hit the tape measure, folks. That <laughs> one is downtown Seattle. Watch that baby go. Way over the fence, into the Yankee bullpen. That's going to have a flat side on it. Oh, my goodness. In game four of the 1989 championship series, Jose cracked the ozone of the Sky Dome. Swing and a high, deep drive to left field. If that stays fair, that is gone. Tell it goodbye into the upper deck. Cito Gaston still can't believe it. A prodigious blast from a Ruthian member of the all-time A's starting outfield, Jose Canseco. The final member of the all-time outfield triumvirate. Reggie Jackson. When I was a young kid, I was a great player. There's a long drive. Jackson has hit it all. And it is gone. I had more talent than most players. Reggie Jackson dives. Has he got it? He has. 99% of them. And so for me, all I had to do was have a good year, and I was either I was going to be in the top five or ten in most valuable player award. There's a long, long drive to deep left going and gone. The kind of power that he has, he can hit some of the longest shots in baseball. And I was going to be named to the All-Star team. And it was just fulfilling the God-given ability that I have. Reggie Jackson, a fine all-around player. Doc Ellis threw me a high slider. Out over the plate, really a, a, a good pitch to hit. Bingo, it went a mile. Way up, it is off the roof. That hit the transformer up there. I've done some awesome things. I was top gun for a while. Reggie said goodbye to Oakland after the 1975 season, but his return in 1987 marked a triumphant ending to a great career. It was Jackson's 21st and final season. In a game at Comiskey Park in his last at bat, Reggie bowed out with typical flair. Broken bat up the middle, base hit Reggie Jackson. His last hit, number 2,584. A sunny October day in which Mr. October said farewell to the game he nurtured for two decades. I would compare my career to a farmer. 
you planted a beautiful crop. You got up every day at four in the morning and you went to bed every night at dusk. It rained when you wanted, sunshine when you wanted to. And when you loaded up your truck and went to market, the prices were at an all time high. <laughs> On the way home with an empty truck and a pocket full of money, you'd be smiling. The A's Dream Team Designated Hitters. Harold Bain, second in the voting. In 1991, his first full season with the A's, he hit 295 with 90 RBIs and 20 homers. Drive to straightaway center. That one's hit deep. Well back, well back, gone. You can tell it. Goodbye, Harold Bain. That was the second three home run performance of Bain's career. The player who attained the most votes in the category of all time DH was Dave Parker. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Curveball line deep right field. That one is on its way out of here, folks. There she goes. Dave Parker hits one a mile up into the bleachers in right field. The Cobra, a team leader, helped lead Oakland Dependents in 1988 and 89. Dave's double in Game 2 of the 89 World Series proved most memorable in more ways than one. On national television prior to Game 3, during a replay of Parker's hit, disaster struck the Bay Area. Just misses a home run. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation, allowing Jose Canseco to score, and he fails to get Dave Parker at second base, so the Oakland A's take... take the quake was alternately greeted with trepidation and glee. We're down. down. Everything's down. Relax. We're down. I can't believe that. We're knocked off the air. We're out. Baseball took a back seat to the events that followed. Little did anyone know that Game 3 of the World Series would be delayed for 10 days. As word of the severity of the earthquake filtered in, everyone's worst fears were confirmed. 6.9, 6.9, that's a major Bay Bridge collapse. When 20 feet of the bridge went in the water. The pictures were sadly graphic. Millions in damage. Dozens lost their lives. And the World Series would have to wait as the Bay Area regrouped. We are postponing the game because there is no power in the stadium. In the aftermath of those tragic minutes, baseball finally resumed. On hand to throw out the first pitch, the individuals of the Bay Area who saved lives with their heroic efforts. The healing process had begun. All were certainly thankful that one of the most chilling pages in World Series history had mercifully come to a close. Oakland's all-time managers. Dick Williams piloted the Oakland A's for three seasons, winning the World Series twice. To the young A's, Williams was practically paternal. I enjoyed playing for him tremendously. I loved Dick Williams. When he left, I mean, I literally cried because I just felt, you know, he was almost like a father figure to me with the years that he was there. And, and, and like I said, he sort of helped us grow up and become a team. After winning the World Series in 1973, Williams left Oakland because of his differences with Charlie Finley. In 1980, the A's hired Billy Martin, also runner-up as Oakland's all-time skipper. Under Martin, the A's began the 1981 season 11-0 with an aggressive style called Billy Ball. Pulling double steals, playing hit and run, decoy in the catcher, is flaky but it's fun. Billy Ball, A's baseball. You blew that call. Get back in the dugout. He's Martin. gonna get in trouble. Just you wait and see. Get out of here. Why is everybody always picking on me? 
Martin turned things around from last place in 1979 to a division title two years later. Billy was certainly a favorite, but the top vote getter is all time A skipper is Tony La Russa. In La Russa's second full season with Oakland, he was voted manager of the year as his A's ravaged the American League. Here's the pitch. The momentum never swayed, and by season's end, La Russa's 1988 A's had attained another team mark. Strike three, swinging. The 88 season is all over for the Oakland A's except for the playoffs. 104 victories for the A's this year. An Oakland record for wins. For La Russa, a pennant followed, and then two more. Under Tony's guidance, the A's had done something quite special. Oakland had achieved the best record in baseball for the third straight year, an accomplishment even the legendary Connie Mack would appreciate. Oakland's dream team, an impressive array of talent indeed. Just imagine the invincibility of a pitching staff composed of Bob Welch, Vita Blue, Dave Stewart, and Catfish Hunter. The catcher, Terry Steinbach, and Dave Parker, DH. Around the horn, first baseman Mark McGuire, Mike Gallego at second, shortstop Burt Campanaris, and Carney Lansford at third. Consider the firepower of this outfield, Ricky, Jose, and Reggie. The manager, Tony La Russa. All that remains, the fans' top choice for closer. The Dream Team Relievers. Finishing second in the voting was Raleigh Fingers. Raleigh established an all-time mark for saves with 341, but his first few Major League seasons could easily be characterized as uninspiring. He was originally a starter in 71 when I came over here. When he first got to the big leagues, he was so nervous. He was one of those warrior type people that he'd worry himself into a fit. And by the time the game started, he was a basket case. Dick Williams in 1971 told me that the only way I was ever going to see the ninth inning was going to be as a relief pitcher. I wouldn't see it as a starter, so he put me in the bullpen. As a reliever, Fingers had the opportunity of a lifetime. Growing up, you have a dream of uh, standing on the mound in the seventh game of a World Series with two outs and getting the final out, you know, and that's that's something that, uh, you know, I thought about as a kid, you know, I never thought I'd ever be in that situation, and then all of a sudden, bang, you're there. He was there for the final out twice, in 1972 and 1974 when he was series MVP. In 1992, Raleigh was elected to the Hall of Fame. Dennis Eckersley, the top vote getter for the all time A's, and the fans' choice as the number one man out of the bullpen. By pitching standards, he does everything perfect. He comes in the ball game, he throws strikes, he allows his defense to play behind him, he works fast, he's on time. Dennis Eckersley is a pitcher's dream. He attained a pitcher's dream in 1988 during the championship series against the Red Sox when he was named MVP, recording four saves in four games. He struck him out, and Dennis Eckersley gets out of a big, big jam. Fly ball, left field, going back is Phillips on the warning track, and the Oakland A's take a 2 to nothing lead. Eckersley trying to register his third save. set a record that he's already broken earlier. Back goes Gallego, and the Oakland A's have won the American League pennant. A dominating performance from a pitcher who puts much stock in a domineering style. I try to have presence on the mound, and I think that that helps, that works, because I think that hitters can uh, sense a pitcher when he's not real confident. So I try to 
play the part. And so if that's playing with their psyche, I, I do that. Part of the formula that made him so effective. From 1988 to 91, no one in baseball compiled more saves. And on October 28, 1989, came his most significant one. It's a ground ball to the right side, steered by Phillips. Flips Ackers lead. Yes, he's there in time, and the A's are the world champions. During the 25-year span in which the Oakland franchise has been in existence, no other team has enjoyed the glory of six pennants and four world championships. Through the current guidance of the Haas family, the A's have established themselves as one of the proud success stories in all of baseball, a legacy that has seen the A's franchise flourish with record attendance numbers and a legacy of baseball excellence that will be talked about for years to come.